Hello, Planeswalkers. Tyler here, bringing you yet another Commander Deck Tech. This time we're going to be looking at Roalesk Apex Hybrid. Now, the version that we're going to be looking at is very close to the one I run in paper, so it's relatively budget friendly. That being said, I'll be including some possible upgrades for the deck at the end of the video. Now, let's get started. Roalesk Apex Hybrid is a 4 5 human mutant for 2 green green blue. He has flying and trample, as well as both an ETB and a death trigger. When he enters the battlefield, he puts two plus one plus one counters on target creature that we control. And when he dies, we proliferate twice. The deck focuses mainly on placing and spreading plus one plus one counters, and getting extra value from the creatures that have them. We also have means of recurring Roalesk from the grave, since we want him to die in order to get that second trigger. And we also have a small snow sub theme to help with an alternate win con, but we'll get to that later. First, let's start by looking at the cards that we have that focus on spreading and placing plus one plus one counters. Thrive and The Crowd Goes Wild both place counters on however many creatures we can pay for, with The Crowd Goes Wild letting an opponent help if we want a little political tool. The Crowd Goes Wild also gives all creatures with plus one plus one counters on them trample until end of turn. Next, we have Aquastrand Spider, Vigian Hydropod, and Plaxcaster Frogling. Each creature has Graft meaning they enter with a number of plus one plus one counters, but can move a counter from themselves onto another creature of ours that enters the battlefield. The spider also lets us pay a green to give a creature with a plus one plus one counter reach until end of turn, and the frogling can let us pay two generic in order to give shroud to a creature with a counter on it. Tesserit's Gambit and Steady Progress each let us draw a number of cards and then proliferate, while Merfolk Skydiver adds a plus one plus one counter onto a creature when the Skydiver enters the battlefield, as well as having the ability to proliferate for 5 mana. Hydra's Growth and Burst of Strength each place a plus one plus one counter on a creature, with the Strength untapping said creature, and the Growth doubling the amount of counters on the creature it's enchanted to on each following turn. Forced Adaptation is a weaker version of the Growth, as it doesn't place a counter on the creature it enchants on ETB, and it only adds one counter each turn. Loyal Guardian is a 4-4 Trampler that puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control at the beginning of combat on our turn, provided we control our commander. Skyrider Patrol is a 2-3 Flyer that lets us pay green and a blue at the start of our combat phase to put a counter on a creature we control and give that creature flying until end of turn. And Zamek Guild Mage is a 2-2 that can let us pay green and a blue to have all of our creatures enter with an additional counter until end of turn. And we can also pay green and a blue and remove a counter from the creature we control to draw a card. Finally in this category we have Bioshift, Galloping Lizrog, Simic Ascendancy, and Vorel of the Hullclade. Bioshift lets us move any number of plus one plus one counters from one creature onto another, provided those creatures have the same controller. Galloping Lizrog is similar, being a 3-3 Trampler who, on ETB, lets us remove any number of plus one plus one counters from among our creatures to place twice that amount on himself, which works very well with Simic Ascendancy. The Ascendancy is an enchantment that lets us pay one green-blue to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control. Whenever one or more counters are placed on a creature we control, the Ascendancy gets that many growth counters. If we have 20 or more of these counters on our Ascendancy during our upkeep, we win the game. Finally, Vorel is a 1-4 human merfolk that lets us pay green and a blue and tap him to double the amount of any kind of counters on target artifact, creature, or land. Before getting into the meat of what we'll be putting all these plus one plus one counters on, let's look real quick at our small snow sweep. In addition to all of our basic lands being snow basics, we'll cover those in the mana base portion, we run Merit Lage's Slumber, Winter's Rest, Conifer Worm, and Abominable Tree Folk. The Slumber lets us scry one when it or another snow permanent enters the battlefield, and on our upkeep, if we control 10 or more snow permanents, we can sacrifice the Slumber to make a flying, indestructible 2020 Merit Lage token. Winter's Rest taps a creature that it enchants on ETB, and keeps that creature tapped so long as we control another snow permanent. Conifer Worm is a 4-4 Trampler that we can pump by plus X plus X, where X is the number of snow permanents that we control. The Tree Folk is a Star Star Trampler who has power and toughness equal to the number of snow permanents that we control, and who taps down a creature for a turn on ETB. 
All of these, combined with our snow basics, are mostly meant to help get Merit out easier, with Merit herself being a fantastic target for our plus one plus one counters. Now time for the real beef in the deck, the creatures that create their own plus one plus one counters and who can benefit from having more on them. Shamble Shark, Croconura, Renegade Krasis, and Elusive Krasis all have evolved. So whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control with bigger power or toughness than they do, they get a plus one plus one counter. Shambles comes on a 2-1 body with Flash, Croconura comes with Reach, Renegade puts counters on every other creature we control when it evolves, and Elusive's unblockable. Shark to Crab, Skatewing Spy, and Scuttle Gator all come with Adapt, so we can pay to put counters on them if they don't have them on them already. Shark to Crab taps down a creature for a turn whenever it gets a counter placed on it. The Spy gives flying to all creatures that we control with plus one plus one counters on them, and Scuttle Gator has Defender, but he can attack as though he didn't if he's got a counter on him. He's a good boy, he's just, he's trying his best. Mowu, loyal companion, is the goodest boy, who comes with Trample and Vigilance on a 3-3 body, and who gives himself an extra plus one plus one counter whenever an amount of counters are placed on it. Wildborn Preserver is a 2-2 with Flash and Reach who lets us pay X whenever a non-human enters the battlefield under our control and gets X plus one plus one counters when we do. And Lorescare Quaddle is a 2-2 that gains a counter whenever we draw a card. Finally, we have what is probably the most expensive card in this deck, the Hydroid Crisis, who has Flying, Trample, and who has X in his casting cost. When he enters the battlefield, he has X counters, and both gains us life and draws us cards equal to half of X, rounded down. Golgari Grave Troll enters the battlefield with a number of counters equal to the number of creatures in our grave, and lets us pay one and remove a counter to regenerate it. He also has Dredge 6, but that doesn't really come up too often. Genesis Hydra is the last creature in this category, being another Hydra with X in its cost. It enters with X counters on it and lets us reveal the top X cards of our library and put a non-land permanent with CMC X or less from among the revealed cards onto the battlefield. Our next, albeit small batch of cards, are here to help us bring back Roalesque after he dies. Recollect returns a card from our grave to our hand, Regenesis lets us put two permanents from our grave into our hand, Revive returns a green card from our grave to our hand, and Genesis is a 4-4 that if it's in our graveyard, lets us pay to in a green on our upkeep to return a creature from our grave to our hand. Huh. Maybe, uh, maybe Grave Troll's Dredge is good for something after all. Being in green means that we have plenty of access to various amounts of ramp. Now watch us not use any of the efficient ones. Urban Evolution and Growth Spiral each draw us cards and let us put an extra land onto the battlefield, though the evolution is only at sorcery speed. Conversely though, Evolution also draws us three cards compared to Spiral's one. Coiling Oracle and Into the Wilds are also both kinda similar. The Oracle is a 1-1 that on ETB reveals the top card of our library and if it's a land it goes into play, otherwise it goes into our hand. Into the Wilds lets us look at the top card on our upkeep and put it into play if it's a land. Kiora's Follower taps to untap another target permanent, which works well with Geyer Engineer who taps to add green-blue to our mana pool. Rampant Growth searches our library for a basic and puts it into play tapped. Market Festival can enchant that basic and add two additional mana to that enchanted land when that land is tapped for mana. And finally, Song of Fraley's is a saga that turns all of our creatures into mana dorks for two turns before giving them all plus one plus one counters, vigilance, trample, and indestructible on the third turn. Our next batch of cards are more here just for generic good stuff to work with what the deck is doing. End Raise 4 Runners can be a devastating game ender, being a 7-7 Vigilance Trample Haste Pig that pumps our entire board by plus 2 plus 2, Vigilance, and Trample when it ETBs. Pygmy Hippo can tap out an opponent by making them tap all of their lands if it attacks and isn't blocked, then gives us however much mana it drained from that opponent as colorless mana after combat. Simic Sky Swallower is just a giant 6-6 flying trample shroud idiot that can serve as an excellent attack deterrent. Thunderous Snapper and Challenger Troll each care about us having big chonkers. 
with the snapper drawing us a card whenever we cast a creature of CMC 5 or greater, and the troll making all of our power 4 or greater creatures unable to be blocked by more than a single creature. Frilled Mystic, who's just thrilled to be here, is a Flash 3-2 who can counter a spell on ETB. Biomancer's Familiar is a really weird dog thing that cheapens our activated abilities and can tap to allow our adapters to adapt even if they already have adapted and have gotten counters from adapt. Woo! Nessian Demolock is a 3-3 with Tribute, meaning it either enters the battlefield as a 6-6 or it enters as a 3-3 and blows up a non-creature permanent. Drakewing Krasis is a 3-1 flying trampler, making him a nice target for the plus one plus one counters. And Bread for the Hunt is an enchantment that draws us cards whenever creatures with counters connect with an opponent. Shielding Plax is an aura that draws us a card when it ETBs, and that makes a creature hexproof. Spitting Image is a repeatable clone effect that lets us use extra unneeded lands to make copies of our creatures, like Roalesque, thanks to Retrace. Plain White Celebration is a whole kit and caboodle of effects, letting us choose four times, including choosing the same thing more than once, among creating a 2-2 citizen, getting a permanent from our grave into our hand, gaining four life, and proliferating. Incubation slash incongruity can either grab us a creature from among the top five cards of our library, or exile a creature and replace it with a 3-3 frog lizard. Everyone loves the 3-3 frog lizard. Finally, Applied Biomancy lets us give a creature plus one plus one until end of turn, and or bounce a creature back to its owner's hand. Before we move on to the mana base, let's look real quick at our artifacts. Real simple, we run Simic Signet, Talisman of Curiosity, and our Millery Sphere. Our deck runs a lot of two color cards, so it's very important that we can easily fix our mana when we need to. Looking at our mana base, we'll actually start with our basics. Eight snow-covered forests and nine snow-covered islands help make sure that Merit Lage's Slumber has the permanence that it needs to bring out the big girl. Thornwood Falls, Simic Guildgate, Woodland Stream, and Simic Growth Chamber all enter tapped and tap for either of our colors, or both at the same time with the Growth Chamber, though we do need to bounce a land back to our hand when it enters the battlefield. Thornwood Falls also gains us a life on ETB. Command Tower taps for either of our colors, no strings attached. Waterlogged Grove lets us tap it and pay a life for either of our colors, or we can pay one and tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. Novigen, Heart of Progress, taps for a colorless, or we can pay green-blue and tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Frostwalk Bastion is another snow land that can tap for a colorless, or can turn itself into a 2-3 construct that taps down anything it deals damage to for a full turn. Opal Palace taps for a colorless, or we can pay one and tap it to add any one color in our commander's color identity. If we use that mana to bring out Roalesque, he even gets a number of plus one plus one counters on him equal to how many times we've previously cast him. Temple of the False God taps for two colorless, provided that we control five or more lands. Karn's Bastion can tap for a colorless or proliferate for four and tapping. Gingerbread Cabin is a forest that enters tapped unless we control three other forests. If it enters untapped though, we get to create a free food token, which we can pay two, tap, and sacrifice for three life. Small value. Mystic Sanctuary is from the same cycle, being a non-basic island that enters tapped unless we control at least three other islands, and getting a sorcery or instant back to our hand if it enters untapped. Terramorphic Expanse can tap and sacrifice itself to look for a basic and put it into play tap. Cave of Temptation can either tap for colorless, filter our mana into any color, or pay, tap, and sack itself to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature at sorcery speed. Finally, we have Guild Mage's Forum, which we can tap for a colorless or filter one mana into any color that we need. Multicolored creatures that use that mana enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. That's the deck. That being said, the way I built the deck focused more on very broad strokes for strategies rather than narrowing in on a single one. I know a popular way to play commanders like Roralesque is to use clone effects to abuse his death trigger. So if you want to build like that, I'd look at adding cards like Vizier of Many Faces, Rite of Replication, Clever Impersonator, Quasi-Duplicate, Clone, Stunt Double, or Cackling Counterpart. Another thing that I'd look for is supplementing the deck with keyword counter cards from Ikoria and Commander 2020. For those, I would look at things like Cryptic Trilobite, Slippery Bogbonder, Wingspan and Hornbash Mentors, Fully Grown, 
Colossification, because I just think it's real neat, and the Ozolith. And with that all out of the way, thanks for listening. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And be sure to ring that bell so that you never miss an upload. Later, Planeswalkers.